So last time we saw how you could uh, formulate finding a better schedule for a given problem or a given program using polyhedral analysis and integer linear programming. But once we've found that better schedule, all we have is a bunch of functions that map instances of statements in the original program to times in the new schedule. So how do we turn this new schedule back into for loops? Well, the first step is that we can think of the mapping um, from the original statements in the program to times in the new schedule as a mapping from one polyhedra or group of polyhedra, one per statement, to another. So really, once we've applied the new schedule to the program, we've got a new set of polyhedra that represent the new execution order of the program, and we've got to emit uh, code that traverses the polyhedra in lexicographic order. So suppose that we've got two output polyhedra, and I've depicted them on the left in algebra using set notation, and on the right uh, graphically. And we have polyhedra, which represents one statement called A, and it's the set of all i and j, where i is between 1 and 4, and j is between 1 and 2. So we have i from 1 to 4 here, and on the j-axis, 1 to 2. And then we have the set of all b, with uh, which are the set of pairs i and j, with i between 3 and 6, and j between 3 and 4. So i from 3 to 6, and j from 1 to 3 to 4. And the challenge here is if we're given this group of output polyhedra that represent all of the points uh, in time, or multidimensional time, at which statements are going to execute in the new schedule, we've now got to emit for loops that walk over these points in lexicographic order. So in this case, the arrows indicate lexicographic order, so we'd start at the point at I11, and we'd execute that guy, then that guy, that guy, that guy, then we'd go all the way up, down, all the way back up, uh, down, and so forth. So how do we scan these points in lexicographic order using for loops that we could uh, actually run? Okay, so here's one easy way. Let's just compute a hull, in this case a box, which contains all of the polyhedra, and computing the containing box of a union of polyhedra isn't so hard. And then we'll just iterate over it using a perfect loop nest, and we'll use the conditions on the right-hand side of the set notation uh, as guards on when statements are executed. So what this is going to look like is we're going to have one for loop for each axis. So in this case, we've got two axes, i and j. So we're going to have one for loop that goes from the min of the rectangular box 1 to the max of the rectangular hull, which is 6. And then we're going to have j, which is going to go from the min of the rectangular hull along j, which is 1, to the max, which is 4. And then within there, we're going to say, okay, well, if i is between 1 and 4 and j is between 1 and 2, we're going to execute statement aij. And if uh, i is between 3 and 6 and j is between 3 and 4, we're going to execute bij. Um, and this will actually execute all of the statements in this order, uh, in lexicographic order, because we'll go up and then down and then up and then down and then up and then down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. However, it's going to be very efficient or inefficient because we're going to have a bunch of points labeled by x's here we're actually no statement executes. So we're gonna execute this guy and then we're gonna increment J and we're gonna execute this guy. And then instead of just decrementing J and jumping I back uh, to, or incrementing I back to two, we're gonna go all the way up through the hull executing these two uh, dead statements where neither of the statements inside of here are going to be triggered. Um, and that's gonna to lead to uh, wasted time. So is there a way that we could do um, a more efficient traversal that's a little bit closer to uh, only executing over statements uh, or points that contain a statement. Uh, yes, so for example, we could use projection and isolation to pick out regions with the same statements. So for example, we might start by saying, project each of these polyhedra, A and B, onto the I axis, and then isolate the intervals along I where the groups of statements which execute are the same. So uh, if we projected both A and B onto the I axis, we'd find that there's a prefix where there's only uh, instances of statement A, and then there's a middle part where there's instances of statement A and B, and then there's a suffix where there's uh, only instances of statement B. And so we could generate uh, one loop for each of these, right? So we'd have uh, three loop nests, and in the first loop nest, there'd be no guard conditions because we know every one of these points corresponds uh, to an instance of A, and then we'd have a loop nest in the middle, which uh, interleaves execution of A and B, and then we have a third loop nest that just represents B. And you could take this to be even more extreme. You could uh, do a full-blown what's called cylindrical decomposition of the whole space to find uh, just a sequence of four loops with no conditions, where each loop nest contains only points from one of the statements. You can sort of go wild, and there's all sorts of tricks that trade off the number of loops versus the complexity of the uh, conditions inside the loops and so on. 
Um, but to be honest, even with all the different tricks, polyhedral code generation still isn't super reliable. It's one of the hardest uh, things about using the polyhedral model, and actually it's so hard that a lot of uh, custom systems like Polymage, for example, um, actually have their own dedicated code generation templates to avoid this kind of step. So that's basically the polyhedral model in a nutshell. You try to use uh, techniques from mathematical programming to represent data dependencies in your program, and you can do things like program analysis or program transformation, um, and basically use all the machinery of mathematical optimization to do program analysis and transformation for you. So it's a very powerful tool, but only in a narrow domain. Uh, one of the common things you'll hear these days is that it polyhedral scheduling and polyhedral analysis kind of scales up to programs with a few tens or a few dozens of statements. Um, it only works with uh, statements that are basically for loops, ifs, and data processing with quasi-affine uh, address expressions and bounds. Code generation is very hard. Counting points inside of polyhedra, which is required for some of the analysis, is even harder. And as Ravi Malapudi, who's um, another PhD student who's worked a lot on uh, polyhedral analysis, and created the polymage system told me he said polyhedral analysis is great for analysis um, and not so great i think by implication for things like scheduling or for uh, code generation and the standard tools in case you're interested are things like the integer set library or isl by sven verdulage or the poly tool which is a polyhedral analysis framework for llvm so if you're interested in playing around with polyhedral analysis or using it more seriously those are probably great places to start so just remember that it's a super powerful tool in a narrow domain. It's definitely worth uh, looking into if you're interested in program analysis, and it's a lot of uh, fun. And a great way to start uh, in program analysis if you're not sure exactly uh, what more efficient or more specialized analysis you want to do. So with that, uh, I hope you got something out of these videos, and I'll see you in the next one.